Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Realtree, Muddy Outdoors, Hoyt Archery, Fuse Accessories, Frigid Forage, Scott Archery, Cabela's, Trophy Rock, Night and Hail Game Calls, TrailCamPro.com, Bloodsport Arrows, Rocket Broadheads, and Nikon. My neighbor Bob doesn't mind me borrowing a few of his fence, fence posts here for my trail cameras. Okay, so maybe I didn't steal those fence posts. They came off my farm. I'm going to test out a new bracket. Uh, that Trail Cam Pro is selling for putting on uh, T-Post. So that was the whole motivation behind grabbing those posts. I'm going back into a spot right now where I'm going to set up a camera for the kids. And uh, while well, the camera is not for the kids, the camera is to try to find uh, some bucks that are coming out during daylight. So next weekend, the kids will have something to hunt. And that's kind of what this episode is all about. We're really going to be focusing on preparation for the start of the hunting not only here for the youth season, but in Wisconsin and, and uh, also later for the archery season here in Iowa. So hopefully you'll enjoy today's show. I'm going to get to work and get a couple cameras out and uh, I'll check back with you in a little bit. There's some pretty decent acorn action right here. I'm standing underneath a big white oak and uh, I see quite a few acorns on the ground. So maybe that's where the deer are at. We'll keep our eyes open. Uh, fortunately, this is close enough to that tree stand where you know, if they're coming out to these trees to, to feed on the acorns, we should still get a crack at them. This food plot didn't fare too well being on a ridge this summer. You know, there's still quite a bit of clover in here. This is one of the Frigid Forage Trophy Clover Blend food plots. And uh, we filmed here early summer, back in June. And it was just as thick as can be and super lush. So you can see what the drought did to it. So anyway, this is a great spot. It always has been a great spot. It's about a one acre plot, maybe a little bit less. It serves as a great staging area. The deer stage here in this small plot and they work past. There's an open gate here. The tree stand is right here above my right shoulder. It's about a 15 yard shot in that open gate. And there's a standing cornfield out beyond that. So I'm gonna set the trail camera right off to the side of this trail. I'm going to put it in the field scan mode. And that's a nice function that these Bushnell trophy cams have where you can set it for interval photos over a specific time frame. So I'm going from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. each day during this coming week. And I'm going to get a photo every minute for that two hour period each day. And then probably sometime around Friday, uh, I'll come in here and I'll pull that, pull the card out and look at it and see what's going on here. I don't have to use any bait. I uh, don't have to do anything to pull the cam or the deer in front of the camera. I can get a picture of what's coming out here under natural movement. And that's really what I want to know uh, as the kids are going into this next weekend of hunting the youth season. So anyway, it's a good lesson in how that field scan mode can really help you out, especially in a small plot like this. We just have a little, uh, like I said, kind of a staging area. This camera in that mode will cover almost this entire plot. Uh, so that's my next project to see if I can take Thor's hammer here and pound this thing into the ground. You can see it's a pretty cool system. You can get any adjustment that you want. It's got a ball and socket joint here and a hinge here so you can basically spin it and point it in any direction. You should be able to cover that whole food plot from this one camera location. Well, I'm going to put another camera up on the top of this little hill in a little grassy draw. But in the meantime, while I'm doing that, we'll check out a couple of segments 
uh, from some of the other pro staff as they're preparing for their season. Well, it's the 6th of September, and Aaron and I are back to the farm we were at a couple weeks ago checking cameras. And we're going to go back here, and we're going to start putting up tree stands on this farm. And we've looked at the aerial photo, found some spots that look good, and we're going to go in here and narrow it down and put a few stands up. We're not going to hunt this area until probably the end of October, but there's no reason to not get some buddies up now. So we're going to find the perfect tree and get things ready. Those, when this thing comes together with that one on the top, there's the problem is it's just we're going to be right on top of them. It's all big bottom down in there. Yeah, the only thing that worries me about getting down in here too far is that that spot right there. That spot right over in there looks like it's a decent bedding. And when the trail, when we look at the trail camera pictures, a lot of those deer are coming up out of that. Yeah. Really, the wind's perfect for it right now. It's straight out of the east. That no. oak right there don't look bad. That one? Yeah. I mean, yeah. one of these trees in here is going to be the ticket. This is the mega pinch. Yeah, it's almost too good because all the trees are sitting right on top <laughs> of the pinch. You're going to be walking right underneath of us. I don't know how, how you're really going to avoid that, though. There is no perfect tree, is there? No. Well, Drew and I have made it down in here to one of the spots we picked out on an aerial photo. And as you can see from the map, this spot really pinches down nice. we got a big block of timber to the south of us and a creek bottom to the east. And it all comes together right here at this spot. The challenge that we found right here, though, is that pinch is so tight, all the trees seem to be right on top of the trails. So it's taken us a little while to pick one out. I think Drew and I have finally decided on one, so we're gonna go ahead and get these muddies up in this tree. Well, we finally got the muddy set up in this tree. About a week ago, Drew and I pulled the cameras to the north of us, and we've got several nice looking bucks in here on this farm. So come November, this is where we're gonna be with an east wind. But we've got this stand hung, it's ready to go. Now we've gotta go check in with Scott Pruka. He's been out doing a little bit of work as well. got uh, one uh, one stand we need to check here. Um, we actually know it's in a good spot. We've got to get the uh, ratchet for the camera up there and we're going to switch out to a big solid muddy up there because uh, we feel this is an awesome spot this uh, fall. We've got a big cornfield up ahead of us here. The deer bed just on the other side of this fence down here. But the deer have been coming out of the bedding area, coming right up this little tiny strip of beans and uh, hitting the corn. I mean, for whatever reason this year with the low moisture, they are pounding the corn. So we're gonna see what we can do. Get this stand hung, check these cameras, and get out of here. Well, we're wrapping up our final preparations here in Southern Iowa. Um, we're gonna leave these farms alone until the beginning of the season here. Um, we've got our final set here. This is an awesome little spot. We've got corn, a big cornfield above us. We've got the beans down on the bottom uh, where we had all the encounters and shot Cheech and Waldo last year. But for whatever reason this year it seems like the deer are really pounding the corn. I don't know if they were getting moisture out of it with the drought, but um, there were a few deer in the beans last night I filmed down there. But for the most part the corn is getting torn up. So I think this is going to be a great transition area when these deer are coming out of their bedding area. They've got a little tiny strip of beans here. They're going to head up into the corn and uh, hopefully we'll get a crack at one of these deer we're after. There's two deer on this farm that particularly interest me. One is Braveheart. He was the only deer that was brave enough to stay around when Cheech was on the farm last year. 
and uh, he's blown up into a really nice deer. He's a four and a half year old, big pretty 10 pointer, and uh, he's really visible. We filmed him three times already this summer. Um, we're looking for him, and there's another great big old frame nine pointer called Nine Ball. He's just a really pretty deer. Nothing real special about him or unique, but he's just got a big frame, and uh, when he steps out in the field, you'll know it. So, well, as I said, we're getting ready to get out of Iowa here, but um, next week, Saturday, is Wisconsin's opening season, and um, it's been kind of a tradition. Kurt and I have gone up to his farm and um, hunted up there, and we've got another crop of great deer up there. And uh, one of the deer that we were chasing hard last year is back on the scene, old 2045. He is uh, bigger, wider, and heavier than ever. Just a really cool deer. Um, he was a deer that was in those apples last year. We got a lot of footage of him, and uh, we're hoping we can get a crack at him again. We've got a little issue in there this year. The beans in that field are burned out. They got burned out with the drought. So two or three weeks ago, we went in there and planted a rye and pea mix, and hopefully we've got enough moisture where that stuff's gonna take off and give him something nice and green in there. The other issue is apples. It's a bad apple year. The drought and an early frost has like basically limited the apples that we had last year. Last year we had piles of them. This year, it's very few. There's some in there, and hopefully maybe those deer will come in to get the few that are falling and be a little more aggressive. I think in the past I said that there were so many apples that could come any time of the day or night, so maybe that'll force some of these deer to get on their feet early if they want apples, and hopefully that's what happens in 2045. One other buck that we're kind of watching up there is a buck we call Hilo, and he is a big 10-pointer, long tined I believe he's four and a half years old. I actually passed him last year at three and a half. He came right underneath the tree, uh, right on Apple Ridge there too, and uh, we let him go, and boy, he turned into a, just a beautiful deer this year. So we're hoping to get some footage of him at least this uh, coming weekend. So we're looking forward to get to Wisconsin. So it's, uh, it's gonna be a good weekend. It's always exciting to get in the tree with your bow for the first time. Uh, stay tuned. Next week, we'll have some Wisconsin action for you. Got that job done. Looking forward to the youth season next weekend. That'll be a lot of the action that we bring you. Hopefully, we can find on these cameras some really nice bucks for the kids to go after. I know they're excited about it. It's a lot of fun for me, and uh, hopefully we can get on some of these mature bucks on the farm. I appreciate you joining us this week. We'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big.